Okay, so this is weird because it's all together in the same group. This is a concluding end final thoughts on season one of Discovery, which has been analyzed to death on this channel. And on many other channels, um, Discovery. Star Trek Discovery has been, um, well, it's not nearly as bad as the haters are saying it is. When you consider Enterprise seasons one and two, which were very weak, and you consider uh, <laughs> uh, TNG season one and two was very weak, and Deep Space Nine didn't really get good until three, T TNG didn't get good until 3 either, or really 4 for DS9. Voyager was kind of a mess, but didn't get good until 4, so it, it hung on for a while. 3 or 4, late 3rd season. So yeah, it takes a while for a Star Trek show to ferment. Uh, so yeah, th this one, Jim, is just didn't ferment yet. Um, they could have done without the edgier early 21st century stuff I see what they were doing with the politics and the parables and the whole war arc thing and trying to make it like a parable of modern terrorism and stuff and mentioning things like that but but then they go off and they do weird stuff like they go to the mirror universe for four episodes or five episodes and it's like well okay you've done that and uh yeah they just made some strange choices I could see why because they were basing it on the the vignette story formula. They're probably thinking of Game of Thrones, which I haven't seen, and VSG, and uh, and uh, Babylon Five a little bit, and in the serial nature of Starship locations are silly and silly track. It's like that as well. So they were thinking, well, let's do it like that, that was. You know, let's have like the game is going to be with the thing. Yeah. They weren't doing it like the game really, but they were doing it like new BSG. And like modern reality TV shows. The problem is, I think, basically that you have leads in the story and the st and scripts in the story. I'm sure they're fine actors, but they have been giving the material that they don't really get at first. I think it takes you a while to get the material right. Um, the, the, the They seem to hit their stride with the two final episodes, yet they had to rush through the final one there, it was like they ran out of money. It's like, more so than the war ended. <laughs> really. Yeah, so... Yeah, um... I understand the new season, they have uh, uh, they have Spock with a beard, and they were calling him a bohemian, and, or, a, or, a, or a, not, a, a hipster. But he's not a hipster. He's, he, <laughs> what do they think he's a hipster? He's not wearing hipster glasses. He's got a beard. That doesn't make a hipster. That makes him like a like an ex hippie or something. That makes him a yuppie. Something else. Yuppie. That's what a beard guy. Not a hipster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, not in this one though. But uh, I understand they fired most of the staff after this. Uh, there was an intern person that I knew of who was kicked off the uh, the staff early on for taking pictures of the Klingons and putting it up on his. <laughs> on, his, on his thing, though. <laughs> oh, so some other, some of the characters in there. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was funny. But, yeah, he got kicked off. Uh, most of the, most of the producers got kicked off as well. And then they got rid of Paramount's Last Moon Viz as well. But that was the other show. That was the other channel. Um, yeah, so, yeah, uh, I I'm not sure if Akiva Goldsman is still involved, but uh, yeah, it wasn't that bad. It was it was sort of eh, it's all right. Um, you know, yeah, you have a Star Trek story that's not necessarily it 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 worked for what it was trying to do. I think um, it's just it says some people said it's science fiction, but. Not necessarily good Star Trek, but that might be a little bit unjust as well. Just because it's not... It does take a while to get going because of that chemistry, uh, I think. But I think one of the things that Mark's cards and I were discussing, he hadn't seen hardly any of it, was the notion of them being either in a crowded room where it should be too noisy to talk, or mostly talking very softly in a room where it's 
uh, crowded and unnecessary. And it's not just a hearing thing. It's that, like, why would the Foley not... They do that in a lot of procedural shows, too. I know where they're getting it from. Procedural shows and soap operas. But don't copy that formula. You're in a science fiction movie, and you're, like, running around in a cave, and things are crackling and crinkling around. Don't be whispering. Just be talking. You can, you can be talking quietly and still be talking. So, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's just not, not good. It's not, that's not being more dramatic. That's being hard to hear. It doesn't make you want to pay more attention. It distracts you. It makes you not want to pay attention. Um, psst, don't do that. Um, <laughs> also, very dark and dreary uh, space effects. They were going for this whole sort of... Uh, Look of look at how edgy this is by showing it darker and more brooding and moody, but you can't see what's going on. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Yeah, same issues with the earlier seasons too. So it's not like it's been done before. I'm thinking they they had a low budget for in terms of the CG, so it was kind of on a par with the. Uh, Star Trek Online game, which I have not played yet. I, I looked into it, but I haven't played it. There is somebody that has a Chimera class ship. That's cool. Uh, it's not me. I don't have that yet. But if I did play the game, I probably would get one of those. <laughs> and say, oh, this is a ship from the future. But yeah, um, Starship Locations is coming as a storybook series before it's a game. Uh, because uh, we haven't worked out how a game board would work with, that, with those characters work that out yet. I'm designing the characters, but, uh, but yeah, um, so, so yeah, the, yeah, Discovery, it, it, it'll work, the ship's a little weird, looks like a cross between a pizza cutter or a disco device, one of those spinny light things, and, um, and uh, Star Trek Chevron, like one Delta, My silly network. My silly in the network. Yeah, I know it's spelled differently, but it's funny. Um, yeah. Uh, I know what Stone Gremlins already said. Kind of what um, Red Letter Media has already said. But Discovery, what is what is the crux of it? Of course, you have the... They introduce a gay couple in the, in the show. And they really don't have... Hardly any screen time, but when they do, they have fairly decent chemistry. Apparently, Anthony Rapp's a good actor, uh, and uh, I said he was in Rent, on Broadway. Um, but yes, um, so he, uh, yeah, th those characters work. But <clears throat> being a typical, we don't know how to do romances, even in relationships, even in Star Trek in modern times, modern Star Trek, even twenty first century Star Trek now. Uh, Ten years after Enterprise. Twelve years after Enterprise. We still don't know how to do relationships when writing a Star Trek story. So one of them has to die at some point. Uh, it's either one of them has to die or somebody becomes a total jerk. So yes, uh, uh, Burnham's potential boyfriend turns out to be crazy and he's a counter-spy. Partly Klingon. He's been, he's been augmented to be half Klingon, half human or something. And... Like, they couldn't see that from a scan immediately. They should have scanned everyone that comes on the ship immediately and determined what they were and how they were and everything. And So they didn't. That was a little weird. Lorca being a bad guy was clearly obvious from get-go. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, the, the, the beats it was hitting were not surprising. It might partly be that I'm a science fiction fan and writer as well, so... I might have seen those beats coming before anyone else does, but 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 a lot of that is no, it was just bad, lazy writing, for the most part. Um, it would have been cool to have been on the writing staff, because then I would have fixed. I would have helped. I would have helped with fixing that. I would have said, okay, this is, yeah, the spy is a little too obvious here. We make dial that back a little bit. Make him seem more more personable. <laughs> It'll be less obvious that he's a spy. Um, and don't just kill the relationships because you can't deal with them in the story. That doesn't work either. Um, so yeah, um, except for that, you know, there's classic tropes that Star Trek did 
doesn't do very well anyway. In that sense, yeah, sure. Um, also, ending a two-part episode with an abrupt ending like that, and they do that uh, do that with a couple of them, where they just solve everything off camera almost. Don't 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 tell your story, so they solve it off camera because you didn't have enough effects. It's clearly what happened. Um, yeah, if you if you're gonna tell a story. Yeah, have an ending that you've written the third act so that there's something exciting going on. Otherwise, you know, you have to have, this, you have to have a space battle at the end. Doing the Deep Space Nine finale ending and having them just talk. So you don't do that. Show some of the battle somewhere. There's a space war going on. Even even the action are like t uh, short mini movie had both. Yeah, it was just so well done. Param CBS got embarrassed and was like, "Oh, can't do that." Oh. But yeah, um, but now they're back, so it's cool. Oh, and <laughs> hopefully they don't get paid this time. They're not supposed to make money on it. So yeah, that's my uh, uh, conceit on Discovery. Uh, I tend to agree with some of the uh, the fans that are of my ilk. That yeah, it had issues, but but I also say that of some of the other ones that all of them do, all of them have had issues. Enterprise got good in its fourth season; it should have stayed. If I'd been on the staff still over there, I would have been all like, "Keep it going for another year. Let's see what happens." <laughs> or he was doing a good. Um, Manny Cotto was doing a good job. But, you know, don't cancel it now. Let it go another season. <laughs> but yeah, they didn't do that. Um, but, uh, I don't know if Enterprise is, uh, I, I understand that the Orville is coming out very soon, and we'll have to do Orville episodes now, but they come on TV so I can watch those. Uh, again, uh, Discovery is going to be on All Access and Netflix, and maybe it'll be on American Netflix and I'll be able to watch it. That'd be nice, instead of waiting like eight months until it's over maybe a year later, watching it. Um, but yeah, this is, this has been Binge Watch. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. It starts out sluggish. The first seven episodes are kind of agonizing. But the last seven or eight episodes are actually pretty good. So, yeah. So. <laughs> um, a rushed ending with the Klingon War and the WMD, which was ridiculous. But, oh, well. Um... <laughs> Yeah, that was a little strange. <laughs> Discovery. Anyway, live long and prosper. Mm.